though I don't know why you would be seeing this video because there are a lot of places on the internet where you can learn how to start developing on Android and anyway, since you're seeing this so this video is going to cover the basic rundown on how to start Android development and I'm going to start this for somebody who has no idea about Android development so I'm starting from the step one including where to download the required files and IDs and how you start it's my first video I'm producing about an instruction to code or something like that and it's definitely going to turn out to be embarrassing so the first thing I will do is turn off my videos so that you can start seeing my screen okay and okay so let's do what noob does how to start android development and we end up at this site which apparently the guys at google have written on how to start developing and it looks right from the first as something like bullshit okay uh, we'll leave all of that stuff out and we will straight go to this part which is getting android studio so we need android studio for android development but before android so let's check out the first things system requirements you need windows or mac or linux blah 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 you can go to this site and you can read them this is the website developer.android.com sdk okay anyway, so i am right now running a linux machine and i do fulfill the requirements so all that stuff aside this is the important thing you need java development kit 7 okay so for that what you need to do is you need to get So you probably need to download um, the Java SE development kit and you have to accept license terms and then if you are on a Linux machine you probably should be downloading this file and if you are on a Mac you should download this around windows you should download this or this depending on which version of windows you're using uh, that aside if you are on linux you can also use instead sudo and get install open you can just get this instead you can install open jdk 7 jdk which would be just as good anyway so on my laptop i already have open jdk 7 installed and if you want to make sure how that is i run this command So as you can see, you need to run Java C, which stands for the Java compiler, and the version flag tells you that I have got 1.7, so I am good to go. Now we need 
the downloads in the Android Studio. So Android Studio again if you are on Windows get this if you're on Mac get this if you're on Linux get this and I am on Linux and the file that I have downloaded so downloaded the file and then I have extracted it and this is how it looks like and the studio runs from this file called studio.sh with the file running which I can run studio so if you are on Linux you might like to do something and I like to go and edit this file dot profile file and here I have added Android Studio bin to my path so I can open studio.sh from any command line shell. Um, let me show you how I just type studio press tab and you see studio is in my path you can open it from here mm, okay so let's start studio and right press enter now here android studio has started this is how android studio looks like and if everything is right you should have opened this page right here and we're going to start a new android studio project uh, but before that a lot of the people have problems with Gradle, Gradle not downloading or Gradle not syncing. If you have problems with Gradle, I'd suggest you get to gradle.org. Gradle.org. And you can get a local copy of your Gradle. get the binary only distribution and just click on this and you can save the target so you'll get your gradle saved then uh, what you can do is so you download gradle extracted it again like I have done and uh, going back once again to my environment variables you see you can s need to set these two things gradle home to wherever your gradle is installed and export gradle home slash bin to your path so this makes you have a local copy of gradle which would prevent android studio hanging up on gradle downloading this is an optional step you might like to do this later on if your gradle hangs up because if you have a good internet connection you will not have this problem anyway so you're going to start a new android studio project uh, but before that Okay, this is a new Android Studio project. Let me click on this. So it asks name of my application. Let's say my first application. It says company domain here. You can put anything. You can put championsimmer.in which is my personal website you don't really need to have a real website registered as this I can just type google.com which is not my domain or I can type this and this should work as well so 
basically this is used to create the package name and your package name is also if you want to manually you can change it it is something in order of you know your domain name in reverse dot your application name in all small letters without any space or any special characters between them so this unique package name identifies your app and the Android App Store cannot have two apps of the same package name and inside your phone you cannot install two apps of the same package name so your package name must be unique then um, we need to save this thing to a location for example um, there's a folder that I would like to save my app in so go next now here is an important thing you which platforms would you like your app to be installed for and I want it to be installed for phone and tablet not for where TV auto or glass so here you can select the minimum Android version which would be supported you can go all the way back up to Android 2.3 gingerbread maybe that would support 100% of all the devices currently available in the market so Google officially tells us that there is nobody running a phone less than 2.3 um, so if you come up to Android 4.0 ice cream sandwich Google says that you will target about 96.2% of all the devices that are on the market and any Android developer would highly recommend keeping your minimum Android SDK at API 14 because there have been a lot of major changes in Android since API 14 and if you want to support APIs below 14 you would not have a lot of features of Android so I strongly recommend having your Android min SDK to 14 and in fact some people would even suggest to keep your min SDK to 18 but if you keep your min SDK to 18 you will have 66.9 percent of the devices which means about 34 percent people right now using Android phones will not be able to use your app anyway so we will use min SDK 14 and we'll go next so Android lets you select a default layout for your activity to begin with it could be a blank activity an empty activity um, the names tell all of that so let's say we start with a blank activity you press next so give a name to the first activity on your screen um, main activity is actually good enough and then you click finish and then you wait for Android Studio to build the project for you
so this is the part where you have to wait a little bit configuring your project for the first time can take some time and I'm running a core i7 quad core basically octa core because it's hyper threaded I've got 16 GB of RAM and basically it's a pretty fast machine so if your machine is not as powerful as this it might take a little longer than this plus it needs a little bit of platform as well So here's the problem that I faced and it's a problem that you would most probably not face it's because a wrongly structured SDK that I have but still you see it's just the problem of not finding SDK version 121 so instead uh, what I would do is actually SDK version 121 does not exist we have only SDKs from 1 to 23 so um, let's just fix this issue fix this issue we need to go to our project and it's defined inside our Gradle scripts Gradle is the build system that's used by Android now and actually I need to use I need to compile this app with SDK version 23 and this 121 has come due to some kind of an error which usually does not come but if you do face something like this then you know what to do and So now I think we should be okay. Also, whenever you have Gradle build running and this some process is going on, I suggest you be a little patient with Android Studio and not try to make a lot of changes in your files during that time. So a lot of people do that and they end up screwing up. So the first thing we should check is can build and to build the APK. I think the font size is a little too small for the streaming.
yeah I think it's pretty big enough everywhere so inside build click rebuild project and just wait and let's see if we get any errors or not okay so this means basically your project is able to build right now and next if you are at this stage um, you can either connect your phone and or you can use an emulator so let's just assume for first that you have a phone connected that you have an android phone lying around nearby and i have connected my phone so once you connect your phone you press the play button here and it says uh, sony d5503 which is the phone my phone that is connected and then you press ok and this is going to go and run on my phone um, but uh, instead of running directly on your phone you might want to run it on an emulator inside your PC because of various reasons one of them could be that you don't have an Android phone second it could be you have an Android phone but you don't want to screw with it while you test out developing Android apps or third it's just more convenient to not have to use a phone parallelly so once it starts playing on my phone you can see the logs from the phone have started coming up here um, and uh, we will discuss what logs are later on but um, I can tell you that on my phone the app has started up let's uh, but I cannot show that to you unless I run an emulator so I'm going to tell you how to run an emulator um, so the thing is the conventional way that Android actually asks you to run emulators is they have this thing called the AVD manager click on the AVD manager and you can create a new virtual device and you can tell which phone you want do you want to create an Nexus 4 or an Nexus 5 emulator or Xperia emulator or something like that and then uh, the phone gets created and all that and then you can select a phone and you can uh, er press the play button here so it launches that emulator but I would rather suggest something else which is to use Jenny Motion so Jenny Motion you know uh, I think it's Jenny Motion dot com or org I don't remember but so Jenny Motion is a company, I think Jenny Mobile is the company which makes Jenny Motion which is an Android emulator which runs really fast on Android uh, on, on, on our PC I'm sorry so uh, the default Android emulators which Google releases for the PC they run very uh, very slowly on a PC uh, so instead I suggest you go to JennyMotion.com and get the software and uh, this software also has some requirements so you need VirtualBox installed before you can use JennyMotion so VirtualBox is a software by Oracle which uh, helps virtualizing one operating system inside another operating system so this is Jenny Motion. You, uh, I don't think you need to buy Jenny Motion. You can just download the free version of Jenny Motion. Uh, so where did that go? 
So before Jenny Motion, you should download VirtualBox and install VirtualBox. Um, again, for the very fortunate Linux users, you can install it via Package Manager as VirtualBox. Okay, so there's a command sudo app get install virtualbox or maybe it could be yum or pacman or whatever your package manager using and just add get install virtualbox and you will get virtualbox for the not so fortunate people on windows and mac you need to download it from the virtualbox website install it then you go to jenny motion uh, jenny motion uh, and see where's the free version on the website um, anyway, I you need to probably create a uh, create an account, and you will get a free version of the Jenny Motion Ah, yeah. So it's JennyMotion dot com slash download. Here is the Jenny Motion free download. Right. So I already have Jenny Motion downloaded. So After Jenny Motion is downloaded and extracted, it looks like the folder looks like this, and we need to run this file called Jenny Motion. This file, which runs the Jenny Motion tool, I've created an application shortcut for that as well. Here, clicking this opens up my Jenny Motion app. It's loading. There's some glitch with my Jenny Motion app. Mm -hmm. But anyway, the Jenny Motion app is pretty easy to use. It's very much like the AVD manager that we saw here. Like we saw here, you can create a new device and you can just click on play. So, similarly, the Jenny Motion player it lets you create your virtual devices and it lets you uh, click on the play button. And so. Here is one of my devices, uh, Nexus 5, that I've created inside Jenny Motion, which is going to start. And here that's booting. So while that's booting, let me just show you a little bit about the app that got created inside Android Studio. So let me just give you an overview into the project structure. So here you will have a folder called my first application um, I think ah, zooming in should let it. so inside my first application these are the files that get created so your IML files are for Android Studio related information and your dot properties file are your build related information your dot gradle files define your build instructions anyway main stuff is all inside the folder called dot app inside app there is again similar stuff a lot of configurable stuff inside src we have a folder called Android test and a folder called test these are for unit testing which you don't need right now when you're just beginning you go inside your folder called main inside main there is java there is res and there is android manifesto example so all your java code as the name says is inside your java 
folder all your resources which is any kind of png files any xml files they all go inside your rest folder so, and finally there is a manifest file and web manifest.xml so let me just open up the manifest file it looks like this a new app it shows the package name then it has a top level application uh, element inside which this is the label of the application the icon the theme inside that we have an activity so an android has four main types of things in android app they can be activities they can be services they can be listeners and they can be receivers so an activity is one of those things that open up when you click on an app and the first thing that comes up on your phone is the whole it takes up your whole screen and you can interact with it like when you open your facebook app uh, the facebook activity starts when you open your twitter app the twitter app the twitter activity starts and each screen or each window of an app is uh, sort of an activity and um, you can discuss what an activity is later let's see um, so there would be a Java class for that activity and there would be a layout for that activity so the layout is basically an XML file which looks like this um, if you like design so this defines how it's going to look and it's a bit declarative like HTML um, if you look at the design view it shows how it's going to look um, in the text view so you open up your preview it's going to take some time to preview it take some time to render um, it shows how it's how the, uh, how the uh, how it looks when it's on your phone on your phone screen and uh, this is a java file which is uh, the, the the functional part of it the the declarative part of it is an xml then inside uh, main activity you have uh, the most important function is your on create function so this defines when your create activity is created what starts happening here so here uh, we will talk about uh, this also again so I think by that time my phone has started let me get it up here uh, so I will click on this play button this play button runs my app I'm going to run it on the Jenny motion emulator this time and let's see what happens so Here we go. So my first application it says hello world inside it. There's a little button here clicking on this says something. Um the settings here stuff like that. So basically inside this activity we have included a layout which is content main which is this file and my content main has a text view inside which I have written hello world so well, this is the thing that comes up here I have a floating action button which comes up here and our oh, main activity I say that my floating action button I said click listener and when I click on it it creates a snack bar and that's what happens when you click on it a snack bar comes up um, one thing I did skip was if you want to use your own phone to develop Android apps you might need to do a couple of things you will need to go inside settings 
then you'll need to go inside about phone you'll need to go and tap your bill number a lot of times seven times and it says now you're a developer awesome congratulations you're a developer now then you will have something called developer option just about above phone and you need to make sure that developer options are on and you need to make sure that USB debugging is on okay so unless you do this on your phone your phone will not show up in this screen okay so that's pretty much the basics of how you create a new project where you play play it I'd say you build and run it and it comes up on your Android phone and it runs so you see app that we just installed here is my first application here is the app and we click on it run it and here your application runs so I guess that covers